So the first vitamin I want to talk about at the beginning of the list is vitamin A. Its alternative name is retinol. And as its alternative name suggests, uh, vitamin A is essential for the retina. The retina is in the back of the eyeball and what they use the vitamin A for is to help with night vision, so when there's dim light, and also with color vision. And of course, logically thinking, if you have a vitamin A deficiency, the first symptom you're going to see is night blindness. Vitamin A is found in most animal-based foods, so meats, eggs, uh, different types of fish, so it's really easy to get it through your diet. It's a, if you're a vegetarian, it's a little bit more difficult, especially if you're a vegan. So in that case, I would def definitely recommend taking a vitamin A supplement or a multivitamin. So the next vitamin I want to talk about is vitamin B1 or thiamine. And its phosphate derivative is used in a lot of cellular processes in the body. You can find vitamin B1 or thiamine in pork, beef, chicken, eggs, oatmeal, yeast, just to name a few uh, food products if you want to eat it uh, naturally rather than taking uh, vitamins. Unfortunately, if you happen to have a deficiency in this vitamin, you will be exposed to the symptoms of beriberi syndrome and uh, neuropathy, possibly. So my next vitamin, logically, is vitamin B2 or riboflavin, and they are in the compounds FAD and FMN, which are in flavoproteins. Vitamin B2 also plays an important role in macronutrient metabolism, so fats, carbohydrates, proteins, etc. You can find them in milk, cheese, liver, and other kinds of food products. The deficiency uh, symptoms that you will find with this uh, vitamin is uh, very red cracked lips, uh, angular chelitis, which is when you have cracks at the side of your mouth, um, ulcers on the tongue and in the uh, mucosa of the mouth, and other vitamin deficiencies. So vitamin B3, which is otherwise known as niacin or niacin or nicotinic acid, it binds to G-coupled protein receptors and inhibits uh, lipolysis or fatty breakdown in adipose tissue. When you have vitamin B3 deficiency, uh, you will get the disease pellagra. Um, and this is one of the five epidemic diseases that are usually found in countries where malnutrition is common. Vitamin B5 or pantothenic acid is used for metabolic processes and coenzyme A synthesis. It's very rare to have a vitamin B5 a deficiency, but if you do, the symptoms are very similar to other types of um, B vitamin deficiency. So if you do feel that you're not 100%, but you're not really sure which deficiency you might have, try just taking a beta complex and see if that helps. So now onto vitamin uh, B6 or pyridoxal phosphate. It is a cofactor in amino acid metabolism. If you're unfortunate enough to get a deficiency in this vitamin, you will have seborrheic dermatitis, atrophic glossitis, conjunctivitis, and in some rare cases, even neuropathy. So the last vitamin um, in the B list, vitamin B12 or cobalamin, it's essential for blood formation and nervous system function. If you have a deficiency in vitamin B12, you will unfortunately get pernicious anemia, which if you watch our previous vlog on the mini Oktoberfest, you will see that beer contains vitamin B12, but it's bad for your liver, so don't drink too much. And in severe cases where you do have neuropathy, uh, that is because of the atrophy or the aplasia of the myelin sheath on the nerves. Now onto my favorite vitamin, vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C is a collagen synthesis aid or cofactor. So it's really important for our skin, our hair, and our nails looking good. It's also an immune system booster, so it is uh, like a prevention, if you would like, um, to stop you getting sick, or if you already are sick, it's gonna help you heal twice as fast. And it's also an antioxidant. Unfortunately, if you happen to get a, a deficiency in this vitamin, which is unlikely, but can happen if your diet is really bad, uh, you're gonna get scurvy. Scurvy is a disease of the connective tissue where your skin just starts to fall apart because the collagen isn't being synthesized. And you can usually see that in the gums. So dentists, please remember this, it's really important. If you see someone with a really bad gum disease or really atrophic gums, ask them if they're taking any vitamins. Now onto vitamin D3 or colocalciferol. Vitamin D3, uh, no, a lot of you might not know it, but it does actually uh, play an essential role in the absorption of calcium. Calcium cannot be absorbed without vitamin D3. So even if you're taking supplements, 
if your vitamin D3 levels are low, they're not going to help you at all. If you have a deficiency in this, unfortunately you're going to get rickets. And uh, you can see that in a lot of children if they're not getting the nutrients that they need. So please, especially if you have children, make sure they're getting their calcium and their vitamin D. Vitamin E, or alpha tocopherol, it's an antioxidant. It plays a role in enzy enzymatic processes and it plays a role in gene expression. Uh, a deficiency in vitamin E unfortunately causes a neuropathy due to the poor conduction of the nerves. Vitamin K, or phyloquinone, uh, there are two subtypes of vitamin K, uh, vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. Vitamin K1 is extremely important in uh, blood clotting factor formation, and vitamin K2 is extremely important in bone metabolism. So of course, if you have a deficiency in either of them, you're going to have hemophilia with vitamin K1 because the clotting factors aren't being formed, and you're going to have uh, a problem with bone metabolism, thin bones, um, possibly increased risk of fracture if uh, you have a deficiency in K2. Biotin, otherwise known as vitamin H or coenzyme R, it's really important for cell growth, fatty acid production and amino acid metabolism. Deficiencies in this vitamin cause alopecia, dermatitis and conjunctivitis. So the last vitamin I'm going to talk about today is folic acid. Uh, another name for folic acid is vitamin B9 or folate. It's really essential for synthesis and repair of DNA, uh, cell division and cell growth. Unfortunately, there are many, many symptoms with a folate deficiency. I'm just going to list a few of the main ones. Uh, usually in an unborn child, you have growth disturbance, especially in the neural tube. And with adults, you have mental confusion, um, disturbing behavior, uh, lack of uh, concentration and mouth ulcers.